with a grooving crisis averted by the arrival of a new cutter and arbor, I can crack on with making the doors, grooving the inside edge and ends of the rails, and all around the mid rail on the tall doors, using a sled to make the end cuts safe and controlled. Then I'm back at the MFT cutting 6mm panels for the doors. It's such a great way to make accurate repetitive cuts with a minimum of space. And with all the components to hand I can start putting together the doors. And this is one of the tall wardrobe doors and I start with a left hand style. I've already marked the rail positions so and again the top panel is pretty straightforward followed by the top rail, the mid rail, bottom panel, and the deeper base rail. These are all just glued in place with my usual Poly 10 PVA. And with the door dropped flat on the bench, I can add in the loose tenons made from the same material as the panels, and again just pressed home with plenty of glue. With the loose tenons in place, the door gets clamped across the rails, as always checking for square as we go. Once dry, the loose tenon horns are trimmed off with the track saw, and then all the doors get a thorough sanding to remove any residual traces of glue or resolve any slight misalignment issues. To keep things simple between the carcasses and the doors, I'm using a story stick with its hinge positions marked and transferring these to the doors and carcasses for the hinge and hinge plates, marking and drilling these out in the usual way. Pro tip, put a mark on the inside of the top hinge pocket so you always know which door this is. With the doors all done I'm making the base plinth for the carcass to sit on and this one's made from 4x2 and 2x2 softwood simply held together with some honking great screws. Oh and I'm putting in a couple of mid rails as well just to add a bit more support. There are three shelves in this job, one in the top box and two in the wardrobe, none of which will bear any significant weight, but I'm lipping them with a solid edging just because of the width, simply gluing them on and holding them down with the tape, then sanding them back once set. For convenience I cut the shelves to the same width as the carcass tops and bases, so the finished shelves need trimming back by a few millimetres. To make this easy I use a 3mm packer against the flagstop to trim back the edging and the shelf in one cut.
and that was where this project kind of fizzles out a bit really. Uh, all the components are made and ready for painting and everything was sprayed, white of course. Uh, the only interesting part of it really, and I would rather have not had this interesting part, uh, is that uh, this was the job that my Greco sprayer decided to die on. So this whole job was actually done with my little £30, uh, 30 quid HVLP sprayer. If you saw my spraying backup video, then you'd have seen a little bit uh, of the finished sprayed product in the background when I was talking about uh, the speed of spraying. So yeah, uh, with everything sprayed and fully dry, it was all sort of wrapped for delivery. It's a local job, only five or ten minutes away, but everything still needs to be protected while it's in transit. But to be honest, uh, there was no particular dramas or crises on the install of this job. It was very awkward getting everything in, but we knew that from the get-go. Uh, and it was difficult to put everything together because the only space that was available, there was a bed right up against the chimney brush. So literally the only space you had was the, the alcove width uh, to actually build the wardrobe in. Uh, that was a bit like making a shoe inside a shoe box, you know, <laughs> it's just pretty crazy. Uh, but the domino connectors did a really good job of easily joining the carcass together. Um, the skirting boards around the back of the alcove took a little bit of persuading to come out, old original Victorian boards. Uh, and they tend to be sort of clumped in with big cut nails, so you tend to have to cut those out. Uh, and overall, the only sort of niggle I had really was right at the very end of the job. And it was a really silly one um, in that because uh, the alcove, the chimney breast had a very slight sort of lean to it, they're never completely true and plumb, uh, I'd made the uh, wardrobe carcass as wide as possible. That's what the client wanted, as much space as possible. And it ended up being a really tiny infill from sort of six or seven mil down to about 12 or 13. And when it gets that small, I don't bother trying to scribe an infill that, that tiny, it drive you crazy. Uh, I just use a little small piece of quadrant or quarter round beading uh, to cover the gap rather than trying to scribe it. And all I do is I just glue that in and it turns out that the glue of, uh, the glue, the tube of grab adhesive that I had was actually a, an older one, it was all dried out so I, I couldn't get that little quadrant that finished little bit of trim fitted until the next uh, the next visit a couple of days later uh, when I was back there fitting the shelves. Yeah, but other than that, everything pretty much went to plan. The client was a very happy camper uh, and I got on uh, with the next phase of the job. Uh, but that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. I know this is kind of a repeat of pretty much every other uh, wardrobe or big carcass cabinet build that I've done before, but I'm aware that not everybody has seen the whole of the back catalogue, although you should. Um, don't skip the adverts. Uh, so I think uh, these are probably worth repeating periodically uh, and showing again just now and then. Uh, plus, of course, uh, in the old videos I wasn't using the domino connectors uh, in the older builds, so I'd have been gluing them and clamping them on site, uh, which was no fun at all. So it's interesting to see that the dominoes sort of connectors in action. Uh, but that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Oh, and that missing grooving bit turned up. Uh, turns out some idiot put it in a router and left it there. <laughs> I'll see you next time.